Alright, hello everyone. I'm back with another tutorial already. Um, I saw this tutorial by Man's Planes, where he does this uh, really cool trick with, um, with the blurring to create this kind of uh, warmy, wiggly, whatever this is, <laughs> kind of effect. And I really like that and I kind of uh, developed it further and just want to show you how to do that so if I, re, uh, if I pulse this you can see it's being like generated there uh, as a material so it's kind of like 3D-ish and I can change like it's very flexible you can do a lot of things with it like uh, I'll show you later as well but I can just uh, turn down this for example and you can then swap this to like multiply and then nothing happens <laughs> uh, one second you need well, it's working uh, amazingly ah okay I need to pull this up um, so there's uh, a lot of different stuff you can you can do here so that, that looks pretty cool, uh, I think. Alright, I'll show you how to do that now. And we're just going to rebuild the whole thing together. And today, or in this video, because it's the second one today, we're um, starting with a nice top. So this is uh, mostly top work. And um, yeah, I'm just going to change its resolution to 1024 by 1024. And I want the period to be quite high, like around 10. And I want to change it over time. So I'm going to insert the classic app ibs.time, uh, apps time.seconds. And I'm gonna make that quite low. I don't want the change to be too fast, so like times 0 0.5, no, times 0 0.05. Let's say 0, 0 0.1. <laughs> okay, so um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, take another noise. And now this noise, I'm going to uh, insert this noise into here. And that's already a really cool effect you can see here. So this is something that you can already work with uh, very well. Now I'm going to change the period on this to be 6 and the harmonics also to 6. And uh, the amplitude, I want that to be higher as well. So it's basically more contrast. The offset, 0. And um, I also want the resolution to be 1024. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> so, um... I'm going to connect this to a level top and uh, change the contrast, like make that even higher. So just uh, multiply it by 2 basically. Okay, I'm going to attach a null here and then another null to that. Because uh, before we're going to dive into the actual like warm effect feedback thing, um, I want to map the whole thing onto a surface. So we're gonna start off with that. I'm gonna just leave the null over here. Create a normal map from that. And so this is uh, fine. Just gonna leave it that way. And here just um, add another null and call that diffuse. So we're gonna use this as a diffuse map. Okay, so now I want to create the surface and I'm going to do that with a SOP. So we create a grid here and add an attribute attribute create. On the grid I want to change a few things. First thing being I want this to be on the ZX plane. So basically lying on the floor. And I want the size to be 20 by 20 can also change this later of course so now I'm gonna connect that to a geo and drop a camera here and also a light 
And um, the last thing we want on here is a fong material. So I'm going to drop that here. Let me scoop this up a bit. Drop this here and uh, drop the fong onto there. Say power material. And um, now we also want these two. Um, these two things to be uh, the maps for the fong. <laughs> okay, so y you just drop it under, under, say, parm normal map, and drop this one on and say parm uh, diffuse map. So now your little uh, fong thing there should look something like this. And now on the cam, I'm actually going to, uh, like up here, I'm going to split my view and say here, the little drop down geometry view. Uh, click in here and, and press H. So I'm home and I'm gonna um, like go around with my camera a bit. So um, I'm just gonna, oops, <laughs> uh, you're gonna have to get used to this uh, view a bit. So if I wanna, I want the camera to be looking from here around here so this doesn't have to be perfect but like kind of from the side here so up here I can now say save you to cam one oops oh, thank you and um, now here you can see it's been like the, the camera that I selected here is now uh, taken over basically Okay, now I can do the same thing with the lights because I want the lights to be coming from the other side. So I just uh, go around here. You can see the camera being uh, f like flying around there. And I want the uh, lights. Uh, I want to save the lights as well. So I can just save you to light one. Now I have the light from the other side. And I can now close this actually. Not going to need it for now. And um, render this whole thing. All right. So it's complaining. Ah, on the attribute create, attribute create that we have here, I still have to turn on the compute tangents, 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 whatever. Okay, and uh, attach a null to here and pull that out of the way over here. Set this to BG. Okay, so now if I look this, look uh, in the perform mode, then this isn't working. I'm just gonna do this. Okay. So on my container, the project container, I also like in a look have the background top set to BG, and the width and height to 1920 by 1080. So now if I go into the perform mode, pressing F1, I can see this being rendered. Not very nice quality though. So in the render, I want to change this to HD. Oh, no, that is HD. <laughs> and this is already looking pretty nice. So basically, we're like mapping this, this uh, noise thing that we've pre created uh, onto onto our surface. So uh, this is already pretty cool. And now we're gonna get into the funky part. If this isn't funky for you, like funky enough. <laughs> and I will create a feedback loop here once again. And um, I'm gonna call not gonna call this anything. Uh, I'm gonna change its operation for uh, to add for now, and insert a feedback in here. I'm gonna drag the comp onto the feedback. Okay. Now we're gonna work with a couple of blurs. So I'm going to like here add a blur. The first blur and change the, like I'm gonna leave the pre-shrink at one and to change the filter size to 11. Connect this to another blur, which I'm gonna put up there and then composite the two. So before I do that, I'm gonna change the blur on here to two and six. You can play around with that later as always and um, connect that to the composite here now here in the composite we want to change the operation to subtract so now you can see kind of faded out and i'm gonna add another blur here another blur and change that blur 
No, actually, this one, I want that to be 3 and 15. So, rather extreme. And this one, 2 and 6. Okay. Um, after I've done that, I'm gonna drop a level in here. And on this level, we're gonna crank up the brightness, gamma, and the contrast. So, yeah. So it looks something like this. And when we've done that, I'm going to add this to the comp. Okay, so now you can already see the effect kind of going on here. I'm just, I'm just going to turn on the this thing. Actually, going to insert a, a look up as I always do uh, with a ramp, just so we have a black background. And um, I'm also going to do here on a, with a level. Let's just uh, make this a bit brighter. Okay. So now you can already see the effect uh, being created there with the blur feedback loop. Now you can just uh, change some stuff in here, make this uh, smaller, then you get these dots, or make this smaller, smaller actually, and you get a different effect. Like, there's a lot of room to play here. And um, now what I'm going to show you as well is first how you can reset the feedback through the keyboard. keyboard. So I just drop a keyboard in, chop, um, connect that to null, and then take this channel and chop references, chop reference it <laughs> on the <laughs> on the pulse. Okay. So now every time I press one or whatever key you select in here, um, it's gonna reset. Okay. So now what you might wanna do is uh, change a few things here. You can, for example, drop another level in here, like between the null and the comp here. And here you can, in the post, turn down the opacity. So now every time I feedback this, you can only see the blood blur feedback effect happening and not these lines going on in the background. Okay, so I'm gonna bypass this to show you something else. Here on the comp, you can change the operation to multiply. And then in here, I would, when you do that, change um, the harmonics to be like more like two. I'm just gonna do this. Uh, and maybe the gamma a bit higher, the contrast lower. Just gonna do this again. Uh, also, we want the exponent 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 to be lower. Now, if I do this, the um, this feedback wavy whatever stuff is only gonna be there wherever this is. So, if I just make this a bit bigger, I uh, think it's a pretty nice effect. And here again, like you can, y you can play around a lot. I'll, I'll suggest with these noises, and you could even drop this into another noise, so you, you can really create a, a lot of uh, different effects here. I'm actually, gonna turn up the contrast again. Yeah, whatever you you want to do here. One last thing I am going to show you is a uh, working with a depth to just uh, make a this cool kind of lens effect so a uh, yeah I'm just gonna show you so in the cam I just drag the render onto the depth actually before and now on the cam you hear the far thing you want to change that so as you can see if I pull it too low the whole thing isn't rendered anymore, but I want it just like just behind that. So I guess like a hundred is a good. Oh, that's not a hundred. All right, a hundred is a good uh, value for this. So I'm gonna copy this and uh, on the depth change this to uh, yeah 32 bit float. Change the depth space to be rearranged from can camera space and change the range uh, range from two. Uh, to be the reference. 
So now you can see uh, this kind of gradient already happening here. And now to get the... This isn't really working, is it? I'm just going to change this to add again. Alright, see. So see more. Okay, so um, here I'm going to insert a Luma blur. Luma blur. And insert the depth into the input source too. And maybe turn this up so you can see the effect better. So the further the object is away, the more it's going to be blurred. And now here in the far you can change that, like where the reference point is basically. So this is really far, you can barely see it, this is uh, very close, so only like the very closest here kind of is still uh, sharp. And you can even put a level here to be more in control, you can make the, the contrast a bit higher. And then pull this lower, so now you can see it's quite extreme, like this is very, uh, this is very sharp and this is more blurred, so that looks pretty cool. And um, that's it for now. As always, you can change the color here to whatever you please. And um, yeah, as I said, just mess around with all this stuff. There's uh, a lot you can do. Uh, have fun and thanks for watching and see you on the next one.